In our quest to understand ArrayList, one important stop along the way is resizing. And in order to show resizing, I've created a class called Resizing 101. And notice on the main method there, I have two extra words, throws exception. Now I'm not going to explain throws exception in this particular video, but I just want you to note that it's there. And in order to do what we're about to do, you need to have it. Next, I'm going to import two things, the ArrayList class and something called Reflect and I'll explain what that's doing down below. So inside of the main method, we create an array list called list, and we're going to visually represent it down below. Now an array list has really two measures of length. The first one you might be familiar with, and that is size. That's simply how many elements are inside of the array list. The second one that I wanna talk about in this video is called capacity. Now Java doesn't have a natural way to find capacity, so therefore, we've written some code to find the capacity of an array list. And what capacity is, it's how much total storage does an array list have as opposed to how many elements does it actually have inside of it. Now I think capacity is gonna make more sense as we show it visually. Let's talk just a brief moment about what this method findCapacity is doing. I'm not going to explain every detail, I just want you to understand the basic idea of it. What the method findCapacity is doing is it's looking at the array list, finding the underlying array of the array list, and finding that length. And that length right there is going to be our capacity. So when we say find capacity, it's just returning the length of the underlying array inside of the array list. So let's see what would happen if we were to run the code as is. We would get size is zero, capacity is zero. And that would make sense because we haven't put anything into the array list. So let's go ahead and try to add something to the array list. So we say list.add1. So the element one is going to be added to the end of the array list, which happens to also be the front of the array list. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check the size and capacity. And if we were to run this right now, we would get size is one, which we would expect because there's only one element inside the array list. But what's going to be interesting is the capacity is 10. And so the array list would look something like this. One in the first index, and then null in the next nine elements. Now it wouldn't be a zero, even though there's integers inside of there, because it's an integer object, not a primitive data type. If it was a primitive data type int, they would all say zero. But because it's an object integer, it's going to say null. So size right there we get from the first element. In capacity, we get from the underlying array of the array list, and that is going to be 10. Now that we're starting to see the difference between size and capacity, let's play around with this capacity a little bit more. In resizing 102, we've created the array list list again, and we've added one element, so our visual below looks the same. We have one in the zeroth index and null through the rest of the indexes. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to add elements to the rest of the array list. Now that we've added elements using that for loop there, let's see what would happen if we were to output the size and the capacity again. And if we were to do this, we would get size is 10, capacity is 10. So you can see that we have reached our maximum capacity. Now what would happen if we tried to add one more element to this array list? Would it blow up? Would it cause an error? Well no, what it's going to do behind the scenes is add more capacity. So you see it adds five more slots to the array list, increases the capacity by five, and then it inserts the 11 into the 10th index. So if we were to output size and capacity at this point, we would get size is 11, but capacity is 15. In resizing 103, we're going to do much the same of what we did in resizing 102. We create the array list, add one element, and then we're going to use a for loop to add nine more elements to the array list. So at this point, the size of the array list is 10 and the capacity of the array list is also 10. Now what would happen if we tried to add one more element to this array list? 
Would the array list need to resize? Well, yes, yes it would because its capacity is full. So when Java sees list.add 6, 42, what it's going to do is it's going to add extra capacity to the array list. Now that the extra capacity is there, we can shift the elements over so the element 42 can be inserted at the sixth index. So the elements get shifted, and then the element 42 is inserted at the sixth index. Get another example of resizing in Java. Now if we were to output the size and capacity at this point, the size would be 11 because we inserted the extra element and the capacity would be 15. Resizing 104 starts much the same way that 102 and 103 did. An array list is created with 10 elements inside of it. And so the size and capacity are both 10. Now what would happen if we were to try to remove an element from the array list? Would resizing occur? So we're going to remove the element at index 4, and that would be the 5. So 5 would be removed, and then the elements would be shifted over. Notice that that last index doesn't go away, but rather null is put in its place. So now, if we were to print the size and capacity, we would get size is 9, capacity is 10. Now when I'm speaking of resizing in this video, what I'm talking about is the actual resizing of the underlying array of the array list. That did not happen in this particular example. The elements were shifted, but the array itself did not need to be resized. So it only needs to be resized if the array list needs more capacity. Now in Resizing 105, I want to show you something different about capacity. And to do that, I've created an array list list, and then inside of the constructor array list, I haven't put anything inside of it. And I normally don't put something inside of it. But what would happen if we did put something inside of the constructor? So I've put that value of 100 inside of the constructor. Let's go ahead and print the size and capacity and see what would happen. So if I say list.size and find capacity, the size would be 0, but the capacity would be 100. So you can see that ArrayList has a built-in constructor that allows you to set the capacity at the beginning. If you know the capacity of your ArrayList is going to be at least 100, it's a good idea to put 100 inside of the constructor. Now if you don't know how big your array list is going to be, it is far better just to leave it blank and let the computer do the resizing for you. In Resizing 106, I want to show you that the array list class actually has a few methods that can be utilized to change the capacity of an array list. So we've created the array list list and then we're going to output its size and capacity, which would both be zero at this point. Now, if we were to call the method ensure capacity and pass 100 to it, what it's going to do is it's going to change the capacity to that number inside of the parameter. And that's only if it's necessary. If your array list is already bigger than 100, it's not going to trim it down to 100. It's just going to ensure that the capacity is at least 100. So in our case, because our ArrayList does not have a capacity of 100 yet, it would change it. So if we were to output the size and capacity right now, it would say size is 0 and capacity is 100. So if a programmer knew that they were about to add a bunch of elements to an ArrayList, they could change the capacity in order to meet the needs of the ArrayList. Now the computer would do that for them, but resizing has a penalty each time the array list has to resize. So if a programmer is just about to add a bunch of elements to an array list, and the programmer knows exactly how many elements or around how many elements that's going to be, it might be a good idea to ensure the capacity of the array list, which is going to resize the array list and set it to a larger size. In resizing 107, we want to look at one more method that can affect the capacity of the array list. And so we've created our array list list. We're going to add 10 elements to it. And then we're going to add one more element, resizing the array list. So 11 gets added to the end 
of the array list after the capacity is increased by 5. Now let's output the size and capacity. And so we would get size is 11, capacity is 15. And now the method that we want to focus on is called trim to size. So if we said list.trim to size, what trim to size is going to do is it's going to trim the capacity of this array list instance to be the list's current size. So let's do it visually. And so now we could see that when we trim the array list, it's going to get rid of the extra capacity. And if we were to print out the size and capacity at this point, the size would be 11, but the capacity would also be 11. So what trim to size does is it finds the size of the array list and it trims off any extra capacity that the array list might have. It does this to release that extra memory so it can be used for other purposes rather than serving as extra capacity for an array list. So let's go ahead and sum up this whole resizing of the underlying array of an array list. So the first point that I made is that an array list keeps track of two things. The size, which is the number of actual elements inside the array list, and then the capacity, how many possible elements can be stored inside of the array list. An array list will add capacity internally when more capacity is needed, simply meaning that you don't have to change anything for the capacity to increase of an array list. It's going to do it for you as we've seen in multiple examples inside of this video. Array lists are definitely dynamic and will resize when an element is inserted. So as we talked about in the last point, whenever an array list needs more capacity, Java is going to internally add more capacity to the array list. We also showed you that capacity can be set inside of an array list constructor. If you know pretty close to how many elements are going to be inside of the array list, say I'm going to add a thousand elements to the array list, it is better to put a value inside of the constructor. But in most cases, when you don't know how many elements are going to be inside of the array list, it's just better to leave it blank and let Java do the resizing for you. And then lastly, we looked at two ways to manipulate the capacity, and that is ensure capacity which lets you change capacity on the fly, and then trim to size, which is going to take the capacity and make it the same size as the number of elements inside of an array list. Array lists are powerful tools, and one important thing to understand about array lists is how they resize. And their resizing depends on their capacity. So once a programmer can start to get their head around size and capacity and resizing, they can better understand how array lists work and better utilize them in their code. Thanks so much for watching the video. If you like the video, please do click like below. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, please do subscribe to the channel. Truly, thanks again for watching.